Hey, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, what we're actually going to be looking at is how we can actually handle our links um, in SwiftUI using Link View. So just to show you an example of this with one of the links. So on the simulator, if you basically just tap on this link here, when we actually build it, um, this will actually open up a link in uh, Safari. Now I'm showing you this on a simulator, um, but I will show you this on my phone so we can actually test out all the other links um, because that's what we'll need to use is a phone um, for these other two. Um, but for this one, you can use a simulator and also as well, um, I can't actually uh, do that right now because you'll see in my face. So once I get rid of my big head, we'll be able to actually test it properly. So let's jump straight into the video. <laughs> Oh God. Right. Okay. So we're actually carrying on from our, you know, build a news app series. Now if you've not actually, um, reached this point. You want to get the app to where I'm up to now. I'll actually link, um, at the top here in the cards, a link to the playlist. So you can actually do that yourself. Um, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually look at how we can use a link view in SwiftUI to handle links. So essentially here where it says, follow me, um, I want to basically use a link view for this view and also some other views as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually, I'm, I'm actually going to type out the link view and then break it down a bit. So let me just do that now. All right, cool. So essentially this is a link view. So in the link view, we basically have two parameters. So the first parameter that we have is a destination parameter. And what this essentially is, is this is where we define the URL for where we want our link to actually open up. So in our case, I basically specified here my Twitter um, URL. So this is gonna basically be my Twitter URL. And then we have another parameter here, which is a closure um, called label, where we actually throw back our view. So we're basically saying this is the view that we want to basically wrap our link around. So this can be any view. So essentially what's going to happen is when someone taps on this um, link, then it's actually going to open up um, another, uh, you know, uh, component. So it's going to open up the Safari view, or if you have Twitter on your device, it'll open up Twitter and you can go from there. Now, what I actually want to do is I actually want to add in a few more links just to show you how we can basically, you know, mess around with these. And I'm just going to break it down for you. All right, cool. So you might be looking at this and it is a bit different to the other one. So let's compare it. So you can see here on the first one that we just we, we defined the destination and we specified the label. So the component we want the link to be wrapped around. But in the second examples here, where we say contact me and call me, we actually just specify a string. So you can see here, we've got a string here saying contact me via email. And we basically specify the destination for this link view. So this link view is actually just a view itself. So it's not actually wrapped around anything else. So this is just a title and the destination. So you might be looking at this and wondering what is this brother doing? Well, essentially what I'm doing is I'm basically using a call. There's something called a URL scheme. So these two are actually URL schemes where you can actually access the device's capabilities to perform some kind of action. Now, what this one is, is the email action. So what will happen is when you tap this, it'll actually open up the email client on the device. So on your iPhone and it'll actually present this from the bottom, you know, so you automatically get an email and it says, you know, mail to, and then the email. And then the second one that we have is a telephone action. So this will actually display the native component to actually call someone. So you'll get a native dialogue and it'll say call. Now it's worth noting, you can't actually test these two um, on a simulator. So if you have a real iPhone, you can run on your phone and test it out, that's fine. But if you've got a simulator, you just have to trust me that this works. <laughs> So essentially, um, what we're going to do now, though, looking at it, is we're actually going to make an improvement. So normally, when you're working in a code base, you want to put all your constants in one file, so it's all handled in one place. Now, let's say we want to use this mail to or telephone or this link somewhere else. 
we don't really want to be copying and pasting strings around the entire project so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a constants file to store the static um, strings in and then what i'm going to do is break that down and then we'll refactor this and we'll discuss it so let me do that now so the first thing i want to do is i want to basically create a new folder in here called config and then in this folder we're just going to create a new swift file called constants and for our constants what we're going to do is we're basically going to have an enum with static properties so i'm just going to type this out and then break it down Okay, awesome. So you may be looking at this and wondering, this guy, man. So essentially what we're doing here is we've got an enum called constants and I'm not using cases. And the reason why is because I don't want to basically allow this to be um, initialized. So I don't want someone to be able to create a enum of constants. I just want to use this enum to basically uniquely identify each um you know link that we have here so i basically have a static um constant for twitter email and phone and essentially what is gonna let me do is it's gonna let me access each one of these properties without having to create um you know this enum constant at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our settings view and we're basically gonna refactor our links now so in the first link what we just want to do is just say constants dot twitter and then in the second one, we just want to say constants.mail. And then what we want to do is say constants.phone. Oh. Right, cool. So now this is a lot cleaner because we're actually now um, just handling um, the links um, and the telephone number and email all in its own constant file. So we can reuse this enum wherever you want. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up my device on my machine so we can actually run it and then you can actually see all these links in action. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So as you can see here, I basically got my phone um, and I've got my news app here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the news app and we've now basically got our setting screen. So like I mentioned before, we basically have the contact me, the email and the call me. So if I tap call me, you can see here at the bottom how it basically says, do you want to call this number? Now, obviously this isn't a real number, so I'm not actually going to call it. And if we tap contact me via email, you can see here where it actually opens up the email address um, model. So you can actually send an email to someone. So if we just go back to the app now, if I actually tap follow me on Twitter, you can see here how it opens up my Twitter profile on my um, device as well. So you can see how it's basically got my whole feed here. All right, cool. So essentially, if you enjoyed the video, I'd enjoy, not enjoy, I'd appreciate you um, giving me a thumbs up on this video if you like this video. Also as well, um, subscribe to the channel to help the channel grow as well, as well as leaving any comments in the comment section below. As usual, I'll catch you in a bit. Deuces. Just imagine me doing my peace sign in it because you can't really see me. Deuces. <laughs>